Hey YouTube, it's Melanie here. Welcome back to my channel. Um, if you're new to my channel, I'd suggest watching maybe some other videos before you come to this one just because I'm gonna go over just like the last four months of my life and what's been going on and just an update just because it's been a lot and the last video I posted was COVID related. I talked about how I tested positive twice or three times, I'm not sure um, what I said in the video, but um, this video I'm kinda gonna give you like uh not a play-by-play -play, but like a calendar a, an overview of what's been happening the last four months um yeah this is my third time trying to film this video so it's been kind of hard uh but yeah let me get into it so march 15th was my last flight if you don't know i'm a flight attendant um i flew from new york to florida uh, at that time, New York was starting to get um, more COVID um, positives and I was pretty anxious and I was ready to go home to Florida and I basically cashed out like all my PTO so I could be home for like two weeks. Not knowing that, um, two days later, uh, March 17th, um, I started to feel unwell and I actually had like a low grade fever and I really, I didn't think anything of it and March 18th, the day I went to go get tested, um, I went with my friend Erica and she had suggested maybe we should go get tested just in case because we we're um, supposed to be flying back to New York um, in a few days. We got tested March 18th and we got our results in 48 hours and she tested negative and I tested positive. So after that, um, it was really difficult for me just because, I mean, I was happy being home. I didn't want to be in New York, like at my crash pad. Like at least I was home with my husband, but I didn't want James um, to get sick. He has asthma and we didn't want to risk him like potentially getting sick. So we did self isolate from each other. So I had our bedroom and he slept on the couch. And it was like that for as long as I kept testing positive. We stayed like that. And James never um, tested positive, thankfully. So he's been tested twice and both were negative. So he never got sick or anything. Um, but after I tested positive, that's when I started really getting sick. And I was sick for about a week and a half, maybe two weeks tops. Um, my mo main symptoms were... Um, Fever. I had a fever almost every day. Uh, I got really good at breaking fevers. I had to take a lot of like Tylenol, things like that. Um, I drank a lot of tea. I stayed hydrated a lot. Um, I lost my sense of smell, taste. I lost like eight pounds in a week and a half. I just did not like to eat. Like I couldn't taste anything. There was like no point in eating. Um, I had diarrhea. Sorry, TMI. Um, I was very fatigued, but that was because of the fevers. Um, I just spent like 98% of my time in bed really and then I was just kind of like Yeah, trying to get better um, By myself just because like doctors weren't really giving me a lot of information on what I should do to get better So I was kind of just doing a bunch of home remedies and things like that and um, trying everything that you know people told me to do um But yeah, my second I have a little journal here with some notes I'm going over so April 3rd was my second test um, I tested positive again uh, my third test was April 9th I tested positive again um, these tests I was feeling completely fine no symptoms no nothing I was asympt asymptomatic now um, my fourth test was April 19th and I tested positive again Still, no symptoms, totally fine. Um, my fifth test was May 3rd. I tested positive again, and I was really bummed just because I was really hoping I was going to test negative for my birthday. Oh yeah, James's birthday was April 25th. We had to self-isolate from each other and do birthdays that way. Um, but yeah, we... I still... Well... I think he got himself a cake. Yeah, he got himself a birthday cake and we still had cake with each other. Just, you know, not close in vicinity. Um, May 9th was my birthday and since I was still positive, 
I really couldn't do much, but um, James did surprise me and him and uh, my sister Katie like set up like this whole drive-by quarantine birthday thing celebration and that was really sweet. Um, I'll post some photos or videos here and that was really nice. Um, I got really emotional just because I haven't seen like that many people in a while and I was just like in self-isolation for such a long time and it was just really nice to see um, so many people come out for my birthday so that was sweet. Thank you. Um, and finally, May 11th, um, two days after my birthday, I finally tested negative. So that was super exciting. Um, yeah, just really happy finally. Um, you know, I felt fine for so many weeks. I just kept testing positive and my job, um, you know, didn't like the fact that I tested positive so many times. So... Um, I did have to wait to test negative in order to go back. So as soon as I tested negative, I let my job know and they kind of gave me, um, the okay to go back to work. So I had to fill out like a bunch of paperwork and send them my results and things like that. And, and that was that. Um, and then May, May 18th, I found out, um, May 18th, I found out I was pregnant. Um, that day, I went to um, go get blood, actually. I was gonna... I had an appointment with One Blood and to go donate plasma and blood just because I had tested negative for COVID and they need the blood right now. Um, but... For some reason, like, I was having, like, really crazy vivid dreams and just something fell off and I was, like, spotting, like, before my period and normally that doesn't happen. So I thought to myself, maybe I could be pregnant and, um, I didn't want to risk it because you're not supposed to give blood when you're pregnant. So I decided to go to CVS that day and go get a pregnancy test and... James was at home, working from home, and I took the test. And I told James, and we kind of freaked out, and we were happy, and yeah, we were just happy. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, we were really happy. Um. Yeah, I found out I was pregnant and um, it was really hard. It, it wasn't easy and I had a lot of pain and there was like a lot of blood and it just wasn't a normal pregnancy and uh, June 9th, the day that um, I was supposed to hear the heartbeat. Um, I found out that it was an ectopic um, pregnancy. If you don't know what that means, um, um, it's um, where the pregnancy. Um, sorry. Sorry, I needed a minute, and um, I wanted to say this correctly. So. An ectopic pregnancy is when um, the fertilized egg implants itself outside of the uterus. So um, the fertilized egg implanted itself in my right fallopian tube and it never traveled to my uterus. And June 9th was when I found out um, that I had an ectopic pregnancy. And if you don't know anything about ectopic pregnancies, um, just know that they're life-threatening and I had to go to the hospital right away and um, my doctor said I was gonna have to get uh, this sort of injection or have emergency surgery and ultimately I had to end up getting emergency surgery um, when I got to the hospital I had a um, ultrasound done and there was 
um, free-flowing blood in me and um, it was just a dangerous situation. I had to have emergency surgery. So that happened. Um, if you want to know more about that, I'm thinking maybe I'll make a separate video just because there's a lot that goes into it. Um, but just after that, um, that was really hard. And a few days after my surgery, um, June 13th, uh, there was a fire in my apartment building. Um, there's a fire, two apartments, two condos directly above me. Um, I was home when it happened and actually James was home. Um, both my sisters, um, Katie and Michelle and Katie's fiance AJ was there. And um, that was also pretty traumatic. And <laughs> it was just hard because I was four days post-op surgery and you know that was really terrifying knowing that there was a fire where I lived and, and my sister helped me down and walked down seven flights of stairs four days post-op um while I was having like a panic attack and once I got down on the ground I realized that we had left my cat behind so then I was freaking out about my cat um yeah, but no one was hurt in the fire, thank God. Um, my cat was fine, she's good. Um, yeah, so that was hard. Um, just because, like, after the surgery, James and I were just, like, trying to mourn and just process everything that happened. And, and then this happened. It's like, like, what did we do to, like, deserve all of this? Like, it's not fair. It's just really shitty timing, um, but yeah, um, we were living briefly, um, at my in-laws, just because we couldn't go back because, um, of the smell of the fire, just, like, all the carcinogens in the air, and, um, uh, there's also a lot of water damage, uh, that happened to the condo, um, yeah, I'll, I'll post some photos or videos. Um, so June 21st, um, we actually ended up coming to Delray, where we are now, and uh, my childhood best friend, Samantha, her mom, Debbie, offered us a place to stay at her guest house um, on the beach in Delray. Um, so we we're very lucky and grateful that she reached out to us and offered that to us, just so we could have privacy and, like, a place that we could like mourn and like process everything and just be alone together and it's been really helpful and we've been here the last it's been like four weeks I think and it's been really great the first week that we got here um, I went I walked to the beach every single day and I got really tan and I just laid on the beach and I listened to the water and it's just very soothing and calming and relaxing I read books and I kind of just took the time for myself just to physically heal but also try to mentally heal just from everything that's happened um June 29th I was officially on call so I had a week to hang out at the beach and just relax and June 29th um I was back on call I didn't get used 4th of July, I got my first trip, um, so that was like a Punta Cana turn. Um, so if you don't know, that means I just, I fly to Punta Cana and then I fly right back, so I'm not staying anywhere. And um, July 7th, James and I started therapy, actually, um, which is really odd because right now they're not taking like people in offices, it's like all over the phone or over webcam so we kind of met our therapist over the phone she's very nice um, yeah it was uh, like an intake so there wasn't much but she's nice and we like her so um, it's nice that we've started that um, started that just so you know it'll help us heal even more and 
Um, oh, I also got hair extensions. So my hair looks full and pretty. Thanks to my hairdresser, Danielle. She's the best. Um, just with everything that was um, going on in my life, um, I was just really stressed and depressed and I was just going through a lot. And uh, my hair fell out, like a lot of it, uh, more than normal. Um, and that's just like a whole other discussion, but um, I have a video on um, the type of hair extensions that I I got and I've done it before in the past and it really helps with my self-confidence and it just makes my hair look fuller and I love them. So to me, it's worth it. But um, July 9th, I had my first layover in Hartford, Connecticut. And that was fine. I just flew from Fort Lauderdale to Connecticut and um, got to my hotel. Everything is a little different now with COVID. Um, you know, the check-in process, like food, why, like food options, things like that. Like there's no room service, things like that. And just they've limited like things that you can touch or do. So like the jacuzzi's closed and things like that. Um, but the next day, actually, before I was supposed to fly back, back to Florida, um, I, I kid you not, there was a, the fire alarm went off. I was talking to James on the phone. I was on the toilet, and the fire alarm goes off. And James was like, "What is that?" And I was like, "Oh my God! I think it's the fire alarm." I kid you not. I was so triggered triggered um yeah i finished up i told james like i'll give you a call back i need to get out of here i grabbed my i had my cell phone already my uh my mask and i think that's it my cell phone my mask and i left and i put on shoes i went down i had to walk down 20 flights of stairs yeah so it's all fun and games to be on a high floor in a hotel until there's a fire but I walked down the 20 flights of stairs, pretty anxious, but I kept my cool and I got down on the ground. I saw um, one person from my crew, she was not worried at all, but like since this had recently happened to me, I was like kind of on edge, kind of triggered. Um, but it was a false alarm, thank God, but like the fire trucks and like everything showed up. Like it was crazy. Here I'll add some video or photos, but. Oh my god, like what the heck, on my first layover, what are the odds? Like, I, I just can't. Um, anyway, uh, July 12th, um, James and I went down south, um, I had an appointment to finish up my tattoo right here, and James's transmission dies. So, we're stuck in a parking lot, in his dead car. So we had to get it towed to the dealer and yeah, I mean, this is not like a huge like thing that like maybe it's not even important to add to the video, but it's like, why? Why? Why do these, these things keep happening? Um, but it's just a car, you know, I'm trying to think positively and it's just a car and it's fine. And Ford actually ended up um, fixing it and it is what it is. So it's fine. Um, but James did get a nice rental car out of it. He got a BMW that he got to drive around for a little bit and feel fancy. So that was good. So we felt like maybe our luck was turning around. He got a cool car out of it. Um, and July 13th, oh, that was yesterday. We drove around in our fancy BMW um, along A1A and just uh, we went to the top of a parking garage and watched the sunset and it was really pretty and, and then we decided we were going to play the lotto. So we played the lotto because our life has been so insane and down in the dumps that like something good has to happen, you know, like, you know, once you hit rock bottom, there's only way, only way is up, right? So we thought like, why the hell not? So we played Mega Millions, Powerball and the Florida Lotto, so we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll win the Lotto. <laughs> um, 
doubt it, but whatever. We're thinking positively, you know. And yeah, that brings us to today. Um, I've been wanting to film this video for a while, and I just haven't been in the right, like, mental place to do it, and I hope this video comes out all right. Um, yeah. I would say, um, I don't know what to get out of this video, that you never know what someone's going through. Um, I, I posted a lot about, like, what happened. Um, the last four months um, on my social media, if you're friends with me on Instagram or Facebook, I did post on there about like things that have happened, but just because I posted on social media doesn't mean I'm okay or I don't know, like I'm, I felt like posting on social media helped like liberate me and like I felt like so much pressure like keeping my pregnancy a secret. And then going through something so traumatic as like my ectopic pregnancy and the surgery and I felt like posting on social media like helped me a little just to like get it off my shoulders and it's just something that like a lot of women don't talk about. So to me like when it happened to me I reached out online just as anything I could re relate to and there wasn't really a lot of information so I wanted to like post this video and just talk about it. And I thought it would help and just be like therapeutic for me as well. Um, um, and in a way it has been. Um, this video is just hard to film. But yeah, that's what's been going on in my life the last four months. It's been crazy. But I'm back to flying and yeah, I'm gonna, you know, try to protect myself moving forward. I'm still anxious about flying, um, just with COVID going on still, and the numbers here in Florida keep going up, and that's kind of um, giving me anxiety as well. Just because I did test, I did have an antibody test at my doctor's office, and I came back negative for antibodies, um, which is kind of alarming because I did have a f confirmed case of COVID, so I don't know if the antibody test was wrong or why um but eventually i'm gonna have to give blood and plasma and have another antibody test done i guess and see what happens but as of right now i'm just protecting myself as best as possible and not really seeing a lot of people um just my family here and there not even them a lot um but yeah i hope you I don't know like this video and i hope you get something out of it and i just hope um, if you get anything out of this video, I just hope that, um, you treat people with kindness and you're empathetic and you really don't know what people are going through, um, behind closed doors, um, just because, you know, life is hard and people go through things and you don't always know the whole story. And, yeah. I'm hoping my next video is uh, a little more upbeat, maybe something more fun. Um, but yeah, thank if you've watched all the way until now, thank you for listening to me ramble um, and sticking along with me. But yeah, I'll see you uh, in the next video. Bye.